Hello, friends of the internet. It is me, Austin Belzer, uh, from Austin B Media, and I have um, two very special people today uh, out of one of my favorite documentaries out of Slam Dance 2023. Um, I have John, uh, the um, son of Jerry, uh, the titular Jerry, uh, and then uh, I have the director, uh, Lawrence Chen, um, and for those who don't know about starring Jerry as himself, it's this, I think you describe it as a docu-fiction where it's, um, I, I, I believe Larry gets a call one day. I'll try to, uh, keep it within the synopsis, but, um, where Jerry gets a call, uh, gets a call one day from this, the Shanghai police saying, Hey, you're being investigated for uh this crime and you need to either come to hong kong uh, not shanghai um or you know risk extradition or something like that um and i highly recommend anyone going to park city uh whether you're there for slam dance or sundance uh to check it out um i'll have a link in the description below to uh buy tickets as well as trailers and all the accoutrement. Um, but John, uh, Lawrence, welcome. Awesome. Thank you so much for having us. We're super excited about this film. Uh, yeah, like you said, you know, it's a kind of a interesting, strange, genre bending film about John's dad. And, you know, he gets kind of coerced by the Chinese police to be an undercover secret agent. Yeah, thanks so much, Austin. And uh, yeah, we can't wait to dive into this. Uh, very excited for Slam Dance. And uh, yeah, we're we're ready to, you know, tell you everything we can about, about the film. <laughs> yeah, so no let's spoilers, get started. Though. <laughs> yeah, no spoilers. Um, no spoilers. Uh, that's one of my things where I'm, I, I constantly say it in reviews, but I'm like, hey, I don't want to, it ruined anyone's experience. So if you're looking for spoilers, uh, don't you, you're not going to get them here. You're right. not going to get them here. <laughs> um, even post slam dance or even in my review. Um, but let's get started with the most obvious, uh, part of it. What, what, how, what, what made you want to make this a kind of blending of genres of, of the documentary and this fiction story? or not fiction, sorry, I call it a docudrama. Yeah, yeah, you know, there's there's many names for it. And, you know, we, we don't even know exactly how to categorize it. But to <laughs> begin from the beginning, you know, I get a call about a year and a half ago, and it's Jonathan, and he's like, something terrible just happened. And, you know, we've been working together for about 10 years as a sort of producer director duo. I thought it was about like one of our productions that we were working on, like, you know, location fell through or actor like couldn't make it or something and he's like no it's about my dad and he's an undercover agent for the Chinese police and then John was like I don't know what's going on I need to find out the truth and can you can you help me come down to Florida interview my father Jerry and find out the truth and we went down there and you know I'm like interviewing him with John and we're getting this tale that's just getting more fantastical, more un unbelievable, like just stranger than fiction. Jerry tells us he's an agent for like an international money laundering investigation. He's, you know, doing surveillance on his local bank. He's wearing a wiretap to go like talk to bank tellers. And the entire time he's keeping it secret from his family. And after hearing this, we were both like, we have to document this somehow. We have to figure you know get to the bottom of this and tell the story but how everything has already happened how do you go and retell that story and obviously you can do recreations but then who do you cast you know do you there's there's a couple actors in hollywood that are you know 60 70 year old old asian dads and you know maybe tai ma is one of them but they're not going to sort of jump on this product tomorrow so we've always wanted to sort of make these interesting filmmaking decisions. And we asked Jerry, would you like to play yourself? And he said, yes, only if it's a spy film, because I felt like Jason Bourne, I felt like James Bond, and I want the audience to feel the same way. 
So John and I were like, let's go make this doc that kind of feels like a spy film, but ultimately is about, you know, an immigrant searching for the American dream. Yeah. And we were doing this all like pretty quickly. Um, this was still like during the pandemic. Um, so we were moving very fast, small crew kind of thing. So I think uh, Jerry was very interested in how the filmmaking process was on our end. And when we asked him, yeah, um, you know, do you remember the phone conversations you had with the police officers? He was like, oh, absolutely. I could write it down for you. And when he did, he wrote it down in such a way that it was just like screenplay format. It was like, you know, character, dialogue, character, dialogue. And Law and I were looking at each other like, how do you know how to do this? And he's like, oh, you know, when I came, to, when I immigrated in the 70s, like, I want to be a playwright. And uh, this was all stuff that I had no idea that he, I, I think he just kept this side of him a secret because I didn't know that he had this passion, this sort of interest. And maybe he was subtly guiding me into the filmmaking sort of world uh, to live vicariously through me or, or something like that. Or, you know, but I think um, ultimately we were just so interested that he would be able to play himself. And he did a great job, um, in my opinion. I, I don't know. What do you think, Austin? <laughs> Yeah, I, that reminded me that, you know, you integrate um, a lot of the home videos into that, into the documentary. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't want to give too much away, but I thought that was really interesting because, you know, you you think, OK, how did how did we get here? You know, and it also makes you want to learn a little bit more about Jerry himself, um, because it's like. It's the perfect in where you're like, oh, who is this person? And here is, is I think it's the perfect setup for the spy thriller that kind of um, ensues. Um, and I actually want to key in on something you said, uh, the recreations. Um, I, I don't want to give too much away, but there are phone conversations that happen where oh gosh um where the actor and jerry are in the same space um so i guess i want to ask what in did where did that come from first and then uh how did you go about you know um uh, deciding how to do it. A, a great question. Um, and, and to kind of answer your earlier kind of thought, which was the use of kind of VHS, you know, every decision we made was all about kind of choosing to have the audience question what is real and what is not real. Because that's kind of Jerry's experience. You know, Jerry's experience through the whole thing was this surreal thing. So on the one hand, we really want to establish that Jerry is a real guy and he is you know this is this is a documentary this is a the, the subject of our documentary but but to your point like vhs footage of this is very much like what's going on here it's a little bit creepy it's a little bit like like why am i seeing real archival footage of this person what happens to them so that was sort of the the choice to lead us in he's a real guy he's a real uh just dad that's a real engineer that's worked here for 40 years. And then when we choose to kind of immerse you in his world through a more cinematic experience and taking those phone calls and making them much more real, it, it had kind of two purposes. One was, you know, all of the back and forth between Jerry and you know, his uh, commanding officers at, in the, at the Chinese police were via phone. How do you make that more interesting? How do you make that more engaging for an audience? So it's not just phone calls all the time. And then how do you also take how Jerry feels about his relationship with them? Because to him, he feels like they're in the same space. They're in the same room and they're kind of developing this partnership and this friendship together. So that's why we begin choosing to kind of see into Jerry's head a little bit, bringing people together into the same space to give you a little bit of a surreal ride into how Jerry felt as this sort of secret agent. 
Yeah, and I think uh, another part of what makes it, um, what sells it, is seeing the other side of the phone conversation, too, in the um, uh, police department, uh, um, where it's kind of shot like, uh, gosh, I, I, I don't have any um, direct comparisons here, but um, I'll just say that, um, yeah, it just... It, it it looks just like what you'd see out of par uh, not parasite but um but yeah it, it looks incredible yeah thank you like you know john and i were kind of figuring out how to make that you know feel as real as it was from jerry's perspective you know and it's and it's you know choosing it for it to be like you know what this is a this is a cop drama and making it getting getting the locations and the wardrobe and everything uh, to make it a cop drama because that's what it is. And uh, so we went through great lengths and that was sort of the hardest part of making this thing in having that feel authentic and having that feel uh, like how Jerry um, experienced it. No, I mean, like just uh, just Law and I just trying to think of all the different ways to visually represent this and just throwing all the, all the, all the things that we knew worked as far as like cinematic language, narrative language, um, to kind of tell the story outside of a outside of a documentary sort of like box. We're like, okay, well, how? Uh, I mean, Law was very much like, okay, how do we make sure like we're we totally kind of like immerse the uh, the audience to be in Jerry's shoes? I mean, documentaries do a great job of it doing the recreation, but I think like when you're in a seamless world like the one that law creates both in editing and just like like you said in scenic design and everything it's um it's just like uh i i think it's a new way to tell a story um i'm not sh yeah like law and i kept like looking at each other like has this been done before what are we doing here <laughs> yeah like what are we doing it's kind of like <laughs> yes we want to immerse the audience but at the same time we're immersing your dad yeah back into what he just experienced mm -hmm. and yeah. he is the subject so yeah. are we making a documentary this entire time because it's jerry that was the question that was kind of on our minds the entire filmmaking process yeah and it's interesting because um it it, it just kind of i think that's kind of the theme of slam dance this year is i've been seeing a lot of documentaries that are going out of the box. Um, I don't know mm. if you've seen it yet, um, but there's a documentary called Silent Love. It's this Polish documentary um, mm. where it's shot much more like um, a drama where I think the guy, um, Americ, uh, he said um, that he tried to just hang out and sh shoot what, um, what he thought was necessary and then just hang out for the rest of the time he was there. Um, mm. Which... I think alle alleviates some of the problems I have with documentaries. Uh, there, there's a certain thing I don't like in a documentary um, where it's a small thing, but with modern documentaries, I have this thing where if a documentarian chimes in, it's like I instantly get um, brought yeah. out of the film and I'm like, yeah. mm -hmm. but for some reason, when you do it here, it makes sense because it's much more of a conversation than, oh, hey, I am breaking whatever documentarian wall down. Right. Totally. Yeah, no, I, I totally hear you. I feel the same way. You know, it's kind of like if the documentary, like, why do I care about the documentarian's voice in this if it's not about, yes. right? And for us, there are some small moments where we kind of had to break the fourth wall to interact with the subjects. But, you know, part of the weird thing is it's like the documentarians are kind of the subjects themselves and that, you know, Jonathan, the producer is the son of Jerry. And we had to almost really ground the audience in the fact that we are a traditional documentary at times because yeah. we then veer off in another direction where we're going into these recreations that feel like a cinematic experience. So, so, you know, using some of those documentary 
tropes even was useful for us to be like, okay, now you're watching documentary. And then now you're watching, I'm not sure what that is. Um, but the entire time you're watching Jerry. Let's talk about Jerry. Let's talk about the central thing for a minute without spoiling things. So, like I said, pre-interview, I was constantly pausing this movie because I was like, there's no way, right? Uh, there uh, has this existed before what's going on you know there's this whole sense throughout the movie that how did this happen so e this is for either one of you um can you got can either of you just kind of talk about how you went to go recreate that obviously without spoilers um and yeah i because it's this pervasive thought throughout the entire uh, documentary. Yeah, uh, I can I can just kind of tackle that. Yeah. <laughs> it, you know, the whole thing is when John told me and when I tell anybody the log line of like his dad became a undercover agent for the Chinese police, it sounds ridiculous. <laughs> how is that possible? How is that how is that even real? And the unfortunate thing is that it is. And we wanted to find out how it happened and how it kind of played out, uh, which is why we were so intrigued in sort of delving into this story. And it is this feeling of uneasiness the entire time because I'm trying to figure out, wait, what's real? Is this real? Is this not real? And you know, as soon as I heard the story and as soon as, as soon as I'm finding out information from Jerry, I start Googling and I find Same. And I find that the Chinese police have been setting up remote outposts in all sorts of different countries to monitor Chinese citizens. And, and I, I, you know, at first I thought this was an insane premise, but looking into it, that was real. So, so it gave Jerry's story a little bit of credibility going into it. And then we had to discover more and reveal what exactly is going on here? So using, you know, John and I are fact checking as we're going with every step of the way uh, of the story. But uh, what happens is a common and very real thing that does happen. You know, it's funny you mention um, the monitoring out outpost because uh, I was talking to my uh, stepdad before this, you know, just talking through pre-interview pre jitters. Uh, and he's like, why don't you ask him about the Chinese monitoring stations? I'm like, oh, no, 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 that's that's too much. That's too much. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm not going to go there. But then uh, you, you mentioned it. So, uh, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll let him know that uh, it was you talked it about. Was it was honestly one of the first things I Googled when John told me. I was like, how is this possible? And then yeah. and then like the next day, a New York Times article came out. It's like, yeah, they have one in Times Square. They have one in, you know, multiple different countries. And it's just it, it's a real thing to kind of keep their eyes and ears open for Chinese citizens living everywhere. So us getting us choosing to go down there was like, this is a real thing. Yeah. So let's find out more. Yeah. And, um, you know, you talk about, um, how Jerry wrote this out as a screenplay. Did you guy? did either of you ever have access to the original chats at all? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So have, you could go through those. and. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. We had those too. Yeah. A lot of it was uh, via phone conversation, but they did have this sort of extensive WhatsApp chat that John kind of like printed out uh, for his own purposes to be like, okay, you know, what happened and when. And looking through those, it's all in Chinese, but looking through those, I'm like, a lot of that matches exactly what they asked Jerry to do, you know, whether it was. You need to kind of keep the phone on and, and kind of wear a wire to go into the bank or take a picture of what you're eating every morning, every lunchtime, every dinner. Like that's just like a something that we had to check in on with Jerry all the time. So all of those things uh, do exist on this sort of WhatsApp chain with the police. Hmm. Interesting. I, I, I would have thought that would have been deleted, but um, <laughs> but um but th there's this um, contrast you um, 
you put between Kathy and Jerry. And I want to talk a little bit about that. Who made the decision to um, make that contrast? And furthermore, um, why, was that important to the overall story? Um, I could answer this one. Um, this was a doc. This was a documentary. Like there was no, there wasn't a any manipulation in terms okay. of the, I mean, who they are and where they are, and like we gave them, we asked them to re remember how how they felt when these things happened. And then we let them recreate the scene. Um, but that's not manipulated. And we're fortunate that, I mean, we're fortunate that it did work out that way, that you could tell that there was a difference, not only in the lighting, but also in the behavior and personality. And um, yeah, they're, I mean, they were my parents. So, yeah. I mean, they are my parents. And so that was the household that I grew up in. It was very interesting to have a kind of a yin yang sort of um, flow going on there, like one so different from the other. Um, but yeah, you know, it's this is definitely by far going to be the most personal film I probably in the I'll ever produce. Um, and uh, yeah, like it's just an interesting glimpse into my background and and who raised me and these amazing characters who. I, I put on a pedestal because, you know, they definitely pushed me into the arts. Um, but yeah, I don't know if that exactly answers your question, but. No, it uh, does. I, yeah. I can kind of okay. add to okay. that too. It's like, yeah. like it, it's a great question. And to John's point, I didn't have a choice. Like that's just how <laughs> they presented themselves. Yeah. And, you know, John's dad is like every immigrant dad out there and like my own and it's somebody who just like put their head down and worked for 40 years and did everything for his family and is is this sort of like introvert who own, like minds to himself and lives a very simple life and that was his american dream and then kathy here wants to pursue this whole other life of like being a dancer an artist an interior designer and being like loud and outspoken and kind of fabulous about it. And I was so lucky to have these two such contrasting characters. And it, it ultimately ended up being very critical to the theme of the film. And when you watch it, you, I think you will, we will realize why, but but from a from the broad strokes perspective, it's like everyone's here trying to search for their American dream and and they're all doing it in different ways. Um, and we just got very fortunate to have this sort of really colorful cast of contrasting characters to just show you that, you know, the unorthodox lives of of immigrants in America. Yeah, and I think it's a whole uh, cast of contrasts. But with that said, I think um, I think that wraps up everything I had planned. Unless you guys want to talk about something else um, more that you want that maybe I didn't get to. Yeah, yeah no, I think no, you no. know. I think the only other thing I wanted to add is that oh, you know, in relation to Slam Dance and Jerry, is that you know, we're super excited for this premiere in front of like an audience of people, and obviously nervous too. You know, like you were. Yeah. You know, you were mentioning like being nervous before these things and, and for John revealing such a kind of um, personal story from his family, one that a ordinary kind of Asian American family would never share, um, which is why we kind of did this is, you know, it's, it's a unique kind of look into a very interesting slice of life for somebody. So we're super excited to be sharing this story. And then Jerry is going to be super excited to go to the premiere and kind of see his story come to life. So he's the entire family's going to go to Slam Dance and um, we're going to see it all kind of come up, come to life to the big screen and, and everyone's super excited. Well, I can't wait for everyone to see it. Um, I believe um, I'll have dates in the YouTube description as well as a link to buy tickets. 
Um, but yeah, um, everyone have a great slam dance. I want to thank you both so much for coming on. This has got to be one of my most pleasant surprises out of the festival so far. Uh, although I will reserve that because I've got like 20 more films to see. Awesome. Thank, thank you, you so much. Yeah. yeah th thank you both. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure. I, and I mean that. I know I say that in every interview, but <laughs> it, it really is a blessing to, that any that um, when I ask for an interview, people say yes still. So, uh, but yeah, thank you. Thank you both so much. Uh, have a great slam dance. Um, you can check out those watching later can um, check out my review um, later when this premieres sometime. Um, but um, I've got a bunch of other great slam dance coverage. Uh, so stay tuned till next time. Thank you so much, Austin. Thank you so much for having us. Thanks.